Hey everyone, Jan here, codingwithjan.com. So when it comes to app development, one niche that's oftentimes overlooked are Shopify POS extensions. Today I want to show you why these might be an interesting opportunity for you, as well as how you can get started developing these. That should be a lot of fun and let's have a look. All right, so then let's get started with why POS extensions are interesting to begin with. To me personally, it kind of feels that these days most retail sales would happen online. But that's actually a far cry from reality. The data suggests that e-commerce sales still only make up one quarter of all retail sales worldwide. And also over the last few years with rising ad costs on pretty much all platforms, we've seen native e-commerce brands opening up new brick and mortar locations as part of their multi-channel strategy or vice versa, brands that started as physical stores and then only later launched their online store still keep operating their physical locations. Now, either way, when it comes to selling in person, you will need some sort of point of sale system. And that's exactly what the Shopify POS is. At the very core, it's an app that can be installed on yeah, any iOS or Android device. And this app is also linked to your store, allowing you to sell your products or services in person. Beyond that, if you wanna level up from just using your smartphone, Shopify also offers a variety of hardware components like card readers, barcode scanners, receipt printers, or even full bundles, which you might have already seen during editions this year. Okay, now in this video, I don't want to walk you through the entire base setup of the POS app because yeah, there are already great tutorials online, which you can find in the description, and it would take away too much time from the development side. However, the process is also pretty straightforward. So in a nutshell, you would get started by installing the POS as a new sales channel on your Shopify store. From there, you see this quick start guide. So you just scan the QR code and download the app to your mobile device. Then you would go back to your admin dashboard and set up a new location for the retail store. And you also have to manage the sales channel availability for the products you wanna sell. So in this example here, I'm activating the POS sales channel for this coffee blend. Then also very important, if you use Shopify to manage inventory, you have to add stock for the new location. So in this case, I would need to edit the variance, then scroll down to inventory, click on edit locations, and then you can add the new retail store that we created in the settings. And now we just have to update the stock count for this specific location. And once you're done with all the variants, you should also be able to see that right here if you filter for one specific location. After you're done with that, you can return to the mobile app, log in, select the location you're currently at, and after the initial setup and initialization, it should redirect you to the POS dashboard. Okay, from here, you're pretty much ready to sell in person. So in the POS dashboard, you can just search for the products you wanna sell, select the variant and the quantity you wanna add to the cart. And from there, you can navigate to the checkout, select the payment method you want. In my case, I only have cash or credit card via manual entry. So this is where the card reader would be useful. But for now, I'll just go with cash payment and then select the amount received. Now it's finalizing the order. It also tells you how much change is due and whether you wanna email a receipt to the customer. If you have the receipt printer connected, you can now also print it out. But that's all we have to do. This order is now complete. Also interesting, if you now go back to the product, you can see that the stock count is updated in real time. And you can also see how many items you would still have at other locations. And if let's say a customer comes in and tries to order more coffee than you have at hand, then you can also select that you wanna ship these items. And during checkout, you would then have to provide the shipping address, etc. You can still collect payments in the same way as we saw before. But this new order would now be fulfilled from the online store. And we can also confirm that on the admin dashboard. So this is the first order we made with the three coffee packs already fulfilled from the retail location. And this is the second order with 10 coffee packs, which is still unfulfilled and to be fulfilled from the online store. All right, so now that we have a good overview of what the POS actually is and what the interface looks like, Let's talk about POS UI extensions, which are still relatively untapped. In essence, they're kind of similar to checkout UI extensions, which let you extend the online store checkout at predefined extension points, because point of sale UI extensions let you extend the POS app at predefined extension points, for example, right on the home grid, or also brand new 
as an action on the post purchase page. Also similar to checkout UI extensions, we can use a lot of different APIs and pre-built components that make development a lot easier. So the POS extensions allow us to build smarter workflows or integrate our existing apps and basically build features that look native to the rest of the interface. Okay, now how do we get started? Excellent question. And it's relatively simple. Everything can be done through the CLI. So first you would create a regular Shopify app if you're not working on an existing one. So we can just type Shopify app in it, enter a name for your project, and then just follow the guided interface. And then wait until all the dependencies are installed. After all the files are downloaded, you want to navigate into your new app folder and then run Shopify app dev to start the authentication process and register the app under your partner account. So then it would prompt you to log in and you have to select the right partner account. And then you can also select the development store you want to install this app to. After everything is done, you can use the preview link to install the app on your store. So this is just a regular Remix starter template, nothing new here. But then we have to switch to our partner dashboard and bring up the app right there. And inside the configuration of our app, we have to enable it for the POS. So in the configuration menu, you want to scroll down a bit until you see this option right here to embed the app in the Shopify POS. Now with that in place, we can go back to the terminal and now create our extension. So we just type Shopify app generate extension. Here we have to select the type of extension that we want to add to our project. So let's go down to POS UI extensions at the very bottom. And then wait for the new dependencies to install. And then once everything is finished, you should find this new extensions folder in your project containing the new POS UI extension with all the source files needed. And the next time we bring up the development server by typing Shopify app dev, we get a new preview link where we find a new row for our POS UI extension. And we can also click on mobile preview and then scan the QR code. And right after we do that, we see our new POS extension right on the home grid. And if we click on that, we're presented with a hello world message. How awesome is that? Okay, then let's also have a look at the code side of things. So back in VS Code, inside our project folder, or to be more precise, inside the POS UI extension folder, there are two main areas of interest. First, we have the shopify.extension.toml file, which is kind of like the config file for our UI extension. Here we find a few properties like the API version we're currently using or the name of our extension. But I think the most interesting part are these extension targeting sections down here because that's where we define which target we want to use, like where we want our extension to be rendered. For example, we just saw the home tile and we also saw the pop-up, like the modal, if you click on the home tile. And here we also find two others that we haven't seen yet because those register to the brand new post purchase actions. I can also show you that really quick. So now if an order is completed, we find a third action that we can use coming from our UI extension. Back in our config file, we can also see where the content for this specific target is coming from. So if we take the home tile as an example, you can see that the content or the code is coming from our source folder and then tile.jsx. And the pop-up like the modal is coming from source and then modal.jsx. So then we would navigate to the source folder in our project directory and maybe bring up the tile.jsx first. So this is pretty much just standard React, also using some of the components that we will see in a second. And yeah, here's the component itself. And then on press, we bring up the modal, which we can find in the modal.jsx file right here. So here we find the content that was displayed in the pop-up and the welcome message that we saw. And now we can also make changes and just save everything. And those changes should reflect on the app right away. So here we're back on the home screen and then on click, we already see the new content. Awesome. Okay, now from here, it really depends on what you want to build specifically and your exact use case. But one thing that will come in handy guaranteed are the pre-built components that Shopify provides. So on this page, you can find a list of all the pre-built UI components that we have access to. Things like date pickers, different dialogues, um, but also hardware accessing components like camera scanners, which is awesome. You will see that in one second. 
And maybe as an example, we can take a look at the date picker and then also the camera scanner so you can see how easy it is to use these in your project. So I'll go with the date picker first. Here we see a bit of documentation and the different properties that we have access to as well as some example code. And for the sake of simplicity, I'll just copy everything in here and then just replace the entire code that we have in our pop-up right now. So let me just do that really quick. So here we are importing a few components from the UI extensions React library, also the date picker that we're interested in. Then down here, we're defining the selected date as a new state. And if that sounds confusing, these are just standard React concepts. They don't have anything to do with Shopify and you can find dozens of tutorials online if you need a crash course. And down in the markup, we then have one text element that displays the state variable. Uh, we have a button that toggles the visibility for our date picker. And then we have the date picker itself and on change, we just update the state variable with the newly selected date. And if we now save this file and next time we bring up the app, we can click on our home tile and then we see today's date as well as the button. Let's click on the button. And here we find the new date picker, which seamlessly works out of the box. So now I can select the new date and it will also be updated on the text element. How cool is that? So these components are very easy to use and drastically speed up the development. All right, let's see another one in action. And this time I wanna use one of the hardware components, namely the camera scanner. So again, to make our life a bit easier, I'll just copy all the code from the example and then just replace all the content in our pop-up file or model. So this time we're importing the camera scanner component as well as the yeah, use scanner data subscription. So this way we can subscribe to the data feed coming from the scanner. And yeah, the actual component is relatively simple. So you just include it right here and then we can access the data in a text element, for example, or display it. And back in the POS app, if we click on our app tile, we should now see the camera scanner, which already has access to the camera of my phone. Awesome, see how easy that was. Uh, and now let me see if I can find something to scan. So I still have this Shopify merch box. Um, thanks again, by the way, if someone in charge is watching. And there's gotta be something with a, with a barcode. Uh, so maybe we can use these stickers right here. So now back in the app, let me bring up the camera scanner again. Yeah, at the very bottom, you can see scanned data, the text element. And if I now move the barcode in the field of vision, you can already see that it immediately recognizes the barcode from this sticker pack here. How cool is that? And yeah, the camera scanner component took like what, 30 seconds to import and it works right out of the box. And I don't know how much development time it saved me. I would say at least a few hours, maybe even days. Um, so yeah, pretty cool if you ask me. All right, so now that we've seen two examples of how we can use pre-built components in order to speed up our development, I also wanna show you at least one API use case. And of course, here it also depends on what you want to build specifically. But for the sake of this demonstration, we will have a look at the card API. So if we bring up the documentation, you can see all the different functions that we have available, like this subscribable here, where we can subscribe to card changes, or this method right here, apply card discount, which as the name suggests, helps us to apply card discounts. And you can find a lot more and also some examples down below, actually a lot of different examples for different use cases. Um, so this is very helpful, but for the sake of this first demonstration, I will actually stick to the example provided here, building a discount extension. And the idea is that we want to have a small component on the home grid, which is disabled per default. And if the card value exceeds a hundred bucks, a hundred in the shop currency, could be US dollar, could be Euro, then the component should be enabled. And if we click the component, the pop-up should open with two buttons where we can decide what kind of discount we wanna apply. Now you can follow along with this tutorial in detail, but to save you from yeah, just watching me type this all out, I already went ahead and moved this code into our project files. So we can have a look right here and I'll explain everything as we go. So I'll get started in our home tile that we've seen before, the small component on the home screen. As you can tell, this time we're importing the use API package which we're holding a reference to down here in this API variable. And then let me show you the markup first. So here we have the home tile. On press, we're still bringing up the same pop-up or the same model, but this time we're also using the enabled property, 
which can either be true or false. And this is tied to a state variable that we define up here. And here we're then fetching the initial card value from the API. Should enable is just a function that checks whether the value is greater or less than 100. So this returns true or false, enabled or disabled, depending on the card value. But as I mentioned, this is just for the initialization. For ongoing changes, we are subscribing to card changes right here. And then if something changes, let's say an item was added or removed, then we call our function again here. Should the card be enabled or disabled based on the new card value? And then we set our state, which would then enable or disable the component. So I hope this way it makes sense. We have our component down here, which is either enabled or disabled. Initially, we grab the card value and check whether it's greater or less than 100. And here we're subscribing to new card changes and then check if the value is greater or less than 100. And then depending on that, disable or enable the component. Okay, so far so good. That's it for the component on the home screen. And now let's say the component was enabled because the card value is greater than 100. Then if someone clicks, we still want to bring up the pop-up or the modal. And that is right here in our source folder. The markup is very straightforward in this case. We just have two buttons. One reads 25% off and then one reads 10 bucks off. And then on button press, so if someone clicks on the button, we're calling this function right here where we say what type of discount is this? Is it percentage based or fixed amount? We're passing the title and we're passing the value or the amount. And this function here is defined on top. So it's right here. And inside we're just calling the exact same API method that we saw in the documentation, apply card discount. And that takes all the three arguments we just saw, the type, percentage based or fixed, the title and the exact amount. And lastly, we're just sending a small notification, discount was applied. So one more time, we basically just have two buttons and if the buttons are clicked, we're calling the api.card.applyCardDiscount method with all the required input arguments. All right, so then let's see that in action. So on the mobile home screen, you can see that our component is disabled right now. So let me add some products to the card. I'll just add this coffee blend here 10 times. Okay, so now the card value should be above 100. And as you can see, the component or our component is now enabled. So I click that, brings up the pop-up with two buttons and let's click 25%. Notification, discount applied. And if we check back on the card, you can now see that the total value is just 90 bucks. So this was applied successfully. And this is how the API makes our life so much easier if you need to interact with the system or get access to specific data. All right, then lastly, before bringing this video here to an end, I also wanna mention that discounts created through Shopify discount functions are now supported on the POS as well. So if that's interesting for your specific use case, I will leave a link in the description to this article here from the change logs, and then you can read up on some of the details. All right, and that's all for today. I think we came a long way here. We've learned a lot about the POS, what it actually is, how the interface looks like, and how you can get started developing POS UI extensions. And if you wanna learn more, you can check out the resources in the description or the resources that you can find in your partner dashboard and then as usual, if you have questions, comment section, or just try to reach out. And then have an amazing rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.